Born to Ride is sponsored in part by Rubenstein Law, 1-800-FL-LEGAL, representing riders since 1988. Offices throughout Florida, 1-800-FL-LEGAL. If Instagram is your thing, we're there. We're everywhere. Follow us at hashtag Born to Ride Motorcycle Media, your number one motorcycle resource. Thanks for tuning in to Born to Ride TV, the longest running biker TV show in the world. This week, from Born to Ride Radio, it's Doggone Hot Dogs for Forgotten Angels. The amazing story of Jared Weems and his tribute to the iconic David Mann while helping children at the same time. Then, we talk to Born to Ride's very own Eric Runyon as he tells us how this wonderful story all came together. All this and more here on Born to Ride. I'm Clyde. And you're watching Born, Born to, ride. to Ride. And cut. That'll work. You know you're not the first, but do you really care? Crystal Harley Davidson's got the quality pre owned rides you want for a fraction of original MSRP. And if you have a trade, we'll pay more for it, even if you don't buy from us. Click crystalharley.com. Duke's Brewhouse Lakeland, the hottest, newest place everyone is talking about, invites you to Bike Night, first Wednesday of every month, 6 to 9 p.m. Ride your motorcycle and get 15% off your meal at Bike Night. That's 15% off your meal at Bike Night. Speaking of food, it's the best in town with the hottest servers anywhere. Wing Wars? Dukes wins every time. So don't miss Bike Night. Dukes Brewhouse, Lakeland. It's the first Wednesday of every month. Brought to you by Board to Ride TV and Magazine and Rubenstein Law. Hi, I'm attorney Robert Rubenstein, and this is Rubenstein's Rules for Personal Injury. Rule number one. Get an attorney. When you or a loved one have been injured by another's negligence, an experienced attorney can make a huge difference. At Rubenstein Law, we will find all of the insurance, make sure your injuries are documented, and work to get you the best result. While each case is different, a well-known insurance company's own study showed people with a lawyer on average got more money. Call Rubenstein Law at 1-800-FL-LEGAL. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Uh, yeah, this is Jared Wings from Wings Motor Co. Jared, how are you doing today, man? Wonderful. How are you guys doing? Well, uh, we're doing great here at Boss Hog Radio. Born to ride right here, man. Um, you know, we're talking to Eric Runyon, photographer extraordinaire, and uh, one of our marketing guys in the office, and he told us about your story. And um, uh, Eric, yeah, came out, uh, Eric came out and took pictures of, of your project. Now, your charity is uh, Forgotten Angels, right? That's correct. Yes, sir. Forgotten Angels, they're a local nonprofit based out of Valrico, Florida, uh, which is just on the south side of Brandon. And, and uh, what they do, what their mission is, is they take in kids who have aged out of the foster care system. Um, basically, the state of Florida provides funds for families uh, who take in kids that are foster kids and provide uh, some financial assistance to take care of them um, and then but the problem is is once they reach the age of 18 the state of Florida looks at them as an adult and they stop the funding and unfortunately a lot of um, a lot of these families are only fostering for the financial benefit and that, uh, that's a sad thing to really think about so when these the fund stops they basically kick these kids out on the streets um, you know, some of these kids haven't even graduated high school yet. They don't have jobs. They don't have you know, transportation of anything. And all of a sudden, they're left out uh, essentially to fend for themselves with no, no life skills. And so what Forgotten Angels does is they bring these kids in. I call them kids. They're, you know, 18-year-old. You know, they're considered an adult. But they bring them in. The first thing they do is they give them a place to sleep. Uh, um, they have... A 12-acre property there in Valrico, where they have little tiny homes built for these kids, and uh, uh, they give them a place to, to lay their head. They get some food in their belly, and, and they start walking this path with them to, 
um, either graduate high school, get their GED uh, to get a job, or just, you know, basic life skills that we, we all have learned as, you know, having parents to teach us, you know, basic things like setting up a bank account, how to, you know, write a check, how to manage money, how to do a job interview. And so they, they bring these kids in and they, you know, really help them, give them a chance to, to get on their feet. That, that is, um, that's awesome. And we've heard about for, uh, Forgotten Angels. I think we did an event with them years ago, Brandon Harley-Davidson. And actually, you're, in, you're involved with the, uh, a guy who they did a movie on, right, Quentin, with the blind side? Yeah, yeah so, so uh, amazing story. Quentin Aaron from the blind side movie with uh, Sandra Bullock and, uh, uh, oh man, I always forget the, the, the country singer's name. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so Quentin was the, the main actor in the movie where he played a boy who uh, became homeless and this family brought him in and adopted him. But on, on the real life, Quentin has a big passion for what Forgotten Angels uh, are doing and he's kind of come alongside them as one of their national spokespersons. Yeah, and and um, Quentin was involved in this, this uh, other event and I think it was Forgotten Angels as well. We got to interview him for Born to Ride. Larger than life, great guy, big teddy bear. And a great actor yeah. as well. Dave Mann only, um, he only painted a, a few tribes. Is that right? Yeah. So, so kind of the process with the bike that came up was, uh, I, I, I was active duty in the military for 16 years and, uh, I, I developed a brain tumor and in this time of this brain tumor, um, I essentially sold everything that I had like to do with motorcycles. Cause I didn't know if I was going to live a day or you know, a year or what, and so I got rid of everything. And in that time, I had a, a good friend, a local, um, what I call a, a gray-bearded biker guy, a good friend of mine, his name is Mike, he came by and he gave me this old David Mann painting, well, it was the centerfold out of a magazine. And I, I just kind of dropped my jaw because I'm, I'm really huge in the Triumph motorcycles, especially the vintage ones is really where, you know, I find my passion. And in this, the centerfold was uh, a pre-unit Triumph motorcycle, and it was painted by David Mann, and I was just floored. I was like, I never knew that David Mann had ever done any Triumphs at all. And that kind of started uh, this weird uh, process for me, man. I started getting online and looking up every single um, Easy Rider magazine, Iron Horse magazine that David Mann had a centerfold in, and then I realized that he only painted two in his whole career um, with working with those magazines. And uh, um, funny enough, the very first one he painted was in his very first painting that Ed Roth had uh, shown to the guys over at Easy Rider magazine. It was, it was about third motorcycle back in the stack. The, the painting's called Hollywood Run. And uh, the, so the motorcycle, it's barely hard to tell that it's even a triumph other than it being a... Um, uh, parallel twin motor and um, so uh, that was his first one and then the second one was you know featured in in July of 1983 um, in Iron Horse magazine is actually who it's through but that's when you know Easy Riders were the publishers for Iron Horse so um, but yeah so that so, so that you re yes. recreated recreated this motorcycle right tell us about that yeah so I got the painting and I was like, man, this is incredible. And then uh, um, a good friend of mine, Mike Davis, who was the organizer for Born Free Show out in California, I uh, put out an invite to uh, to have a Triumph pre-unit class only for the Born Free this year. And um, I said, you know, what greater opportunity to build a bike um, now that I've kind of worked through the brain tumor period and, and seizures and stuff. And I said, I'm going to recreate this this motorcycle that that David Mann dreamed up. He never it was never really a real motorcycle. And uh, so I, you know, went to work uh, trying to find a lot of those rare parts that was on the bike. Um, but it was he did such an amazing job. I mean, everybody knows his paintings. They're just immaculate. And the amount of detail that he put into this motorcycle made it um, made it easy, but also challenging to recreate. Uh, what he what he what he painted. What's going on, guys? Corey again, uh, giving you a little heads up. I know we've talked about our 30th anniversary party coming up. What I, what I want to do is try to give you guys 30 reasons on why this should be your dealership. 
I know you got some choices out there. You can take a little trip 30 miles up the road and go to another dealership. Hey man, it's your world buddy. You live it how you want. But I wanna show you why Rossiter should be your dealership. I got tons of reasons why, so stay tuned. We're gonna get you updated, buddy. Check out the all-new ThornDrive.com with radio, TV, industry, adventure, events, magazines, social media, and much more. It's the all-new ThornDrive.com. What's going on, all my dudes and dudettes? We are Rossiters. Hey, uh, we're going to talk about being family-owned and operated. Uh, being family-owned, cool. Being family-owned and operated, very cool. We got four family members I believe actually inside the store working here every day which is amazing it really shows the morale the family aspect of this dealership and why we are who we are and why we try to do for you what we do very family orientated come find out why Rossiter's Harley and don't forget September the 12th big party see ya <laughs> I'm Fester Jenkins. Born to Ride is Boss Hog Radio, Thursday nights, 7 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Hey, it's Debbie with Born to Ride. Tune in every Thursday, 7 to 8 p.m. on the Boss Hog Radio, a fast hour of good talk, good biker talk, what you really want to hear. So tell us about that day when you debuted it and, and what was that day all about? Just, I mean, literally days before we decided that, hey, we're going to do this unveiling because the bike's completed. We want to kick off the raffle. Uh, a local friend of mine, he's a YouTuber. His name is Shade Tree Surgeon. His name is Josh. Yeah. Um, he, um, he put together a ride last minute, and we literally had over 40 motorcycles uh, from all across Florida uh, come to Ybor City and do a ride over to Little Valrico, Florida <laughs> to see, you know, a motorcycle that, you know, I built. And uh, it was great because that one day kicking off the raffle, um, it was amazing to see the support, number one, from the people who were there, uh, but to see the, the ticket sales start coming in. It was just like a very, very humbling experience to, to be part of that and to, to help you know, Forgotten Angels out. I brought it out to Forgotten Angels property and uh, I wanted to, to unveil the bike there because uh, the relationship that I've built um, with their organization and also with the boys that work there. Um, halfway through this build, I was about probably about 75% uh, completed on the build, and it was the motorcycle was gaining a lot of traction. Um, I had reached out to uh, several people within the motorcycle industry to find out number one. Uh, which actual magazine that the motorcycle was featured in because I only had the centerfold and I did see the Iron Force logo down there. So I did my <laughs> detective work and ended up getting in touch with Ellen Teresi, uh, who actually owns the original painting. And uh, so I was talking with her, told her what I was doing, and she got me in touch with Jackie Mann, and I've had opportunities to email back and forth with her. Um, and so I realized quickly that this, this motorcycle meant a lot more uh, to the motorcycle community as a whole than it just did to me to recreate, you know, something from, you know, a painting. And, um, and that's when I said, you know, it's bigger than me. Uh, I can take the opportunity to really pay this forward. Um, the whole, you know, initial point was to build the motorcycle and just sell it because the, the huge investment that it takes to build a show bike. Um, and so I, you know, just I was just kind of thinking through the process, and, and somebody had connected me with Forgotten Angels, and I found out what they're doing out there for these kids, and and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna donate the motorcycle to them, and we're going to, you know, raise as much funds as we possibly can 
uh, to help them in, in their endeavors. And, and it's been amazing. So that's why we did the unveil there. I had some of the boys who actually helped me work on the motorcycle. I brought them over and they did some polishing. They did some assembly. And, and it was cool to take that moment to, to build a connection with them and, and build relationships with them because you never know who these kids are going to be. You know, one of these kids might turn out to be the next David Mann. They might turn out to be the next Arlen Ness. You know, you know we never know. Um, exactly what our investments are going to um, pay out to be in the future. So I wanted to make it a part for them um, because they played such a big part in it for me. They gave me inspiration to, um, you know, just even the investment that I've made, just to donate it to them and say, hey, let's, let's make this worthwhile. And I think, um, you know, this process is going to be amazing for them. I, I last week, uh, Tracy... Uh, Tracy Scott, which is David Mann's daughter, reached mm -hmm. out to me and said, said hey, um, thank you for what you're doing. Um, you may not have known, um, but we lived in, in Clearwater, Florida for a while, and my dad actually adopted a son there. And I was like, man, I didn't know the connection, you know, be, with me working with a foster system and David Mann actually adopting. That just, you know, kind of goes together and says, wow. his heart his heart is my heart yes, and you know exactly. just to help just to help kids man that's where I'm at I could care less what accolades this gets for me mm -hmm. I, I don't care I'm going to work on triumphs I'm going to build triumphs on my own because that's what I love to do but to push it forward for these kids man that's that's where it's at for me so if you're interested in the raffle um there's there's several uh prizes that are part of this raffle obviously the the Grand prize winner is going to receive the, the motorcycle, which is a 1952 Triumph Speed Twin. Uh, I've just nicknamed it the David Mann replica. Um, and uh, they're going to receive print number one, the only one on canvas of the painting of David Mann. Easy Riders um, and Aaron Teresi and the, and the Mann family have decided to re-release the, the print uh, it was never available for purchase in print. This is the first time only, but they're releasing a limited edition uh, number of prints, and the winner will get print number one on campus. Um, the second place winner is going to receive a Biltwell helmet uh, that's been painted to the same color scheme as the uh, uh, motorcycle that was generously donated by uh, Bill from Biltwell. Um, third place is a $500 Lowbrow Customs package. My buddy Tyler from Lowbrow Customs has donated that. And then the fourth place winner is going to receive a David Mann official store uh, package with some of his uh, memorabilia and then some of my t-shirts and hats and stuff. So those are the four, uh, the, uh, four prizes. The tickets are only $25 a piece. Um, if they want to make a generous donation of $100, they're going to receive a bonus ticket. So they'll receive five tickets at $100. Awesome. Um, and then uh, the tickets can be purchased right through my website. That's www.weemsmotorco.com. Weems is W-E-E-M as in Mike S. And then the word motor, M-O-T-O-R, and then C-O dot com. Say once you get on the website, you'll see right at the very top, there's a, a tab that says raffle. You click on that, it'll give you all of the details, all of the uh, prize packages and everything. And there's a button that says buy tickets. And you just click on that, it'll take you right into the raffle site. Jared, Thanks for before doing. you go, is there um, a yeah. website where we can get information for the Forgotten Angels? Yes, that's what I was going to say. If they're wanting to make just a direct donation, I know certain corporations are not able to purchase raffle tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to www.forgottenangelsflorida.org, okay. and they have a donation tab there. And just one other note, uh, just a cool factor is um, we're going to be going to the David Mann Show, which is Chopper Fest out in California in December. And while we're there, we're actually going to be recreating the painting into real life. Uh, oh, wow. We're going to the hot dog stand that's in the painting. Uh, it's going to be an amazing opportunity to just kind of bring the painting into life. Wow, that's well, cool. We want to be there, you know, and document anything we can do to help magnify your greatness and everything you're doing for the kids and our future of America. We, and, and thank you for your service, too, man. Thank you. Absolutely. I thank you guys for having me out tonight. All thank right, you, Jared. Right. Good job. All right. We'll follow up. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, guys. Bye.
Sky TV Radio Live every Tuesday night, 7 to 8 p.m. with Dave Flash Morgan, special guest, and Board to Ride TV content at Facebook, Board to Ride TV Magazine. Read it, watch it, write it. How's it going, guys? Hey, hey. Eric Runyon. <laughs> Eric, how are you, man? Uh, this is the uh, the photographer who kind of brought this whole story together to begin with. The ace. He photographer. said it's right here in Valrico. It's it's just down the street, <laughs> man. Yeah, the, the... honestly, it was it was not just right. Here. It was right down the street from where I live, six minutes from where I live. So uh, <laughs> you know, I like to think that I have my finger on the pulse of the chopper community. But uh, you know, I kind of found out through the grapevine about this bill, and then when I found out that the guy down the road from me about how to heart attack. Jared has an amazing story. How, how did it impact you when you heard his story? Well, you know, it kind of it kind of slowly unfolded because, like I said, I, 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 I'd heard about the bike and I started seeing pictures and here and there on Instagram that Jared was taking himself with his cell phone. And then when I found out he was in Tampa, I thought, well, you know, has, this is an opportunity for me to find out more about this guy and more about this bike. And, and uh, see what's really going on here. So I reached out to him, and like I said, unbeknownst to me, he's six minutes down the road. He invited me over to his house, and um, I, the first day I spent about three hours there, and uh, you know, he just really blew me away. He's, he's all about God, family, and motorcycles. That bike is meticulously built. Um, by the time I came into the scene, it was probably 90% done. I think I photographed him you know, putting the front end on or the front wheel or something on, but he pretty much had everything set in place. I just, I felt like I dropped the ball because I feel like I know everything that's going on in the area. You know, not, I like to think that everything going on in the United States, I have an idea what's going on, but right down the street from me, it was just, it just blew my mind. And as I, as I talked to him, it just became very clear that this wasn't just a guy building a motorcycle. There was a lot more behind it. And, um, you know, we would talk about David Mann and, as soon as, uh, as soon as I came home the first day after talking to him, we were both going back and forth text messaging about, well, this picture was in this this issue, this picture was in this issue, and this guy's building a complete David David Mann database. So he he taught me a lot about, <clears throat> excuse me, about David Mann. So as time progressed, he, I went over there again, and he's like, you know, he, he told me about Forgotten Angels when I first met him. And I told him that I would love to be a part of that as a photographer, at least, you know, the little talent I have, maybe I can help somebody. Like you guys were talking earlier, there could be a future Arlen Ness or a future bike builder or, um, you know, future David Mann. There might be a future photographer. So I thought, man, I'd like to get involved. Well, then about the time after that, when I talked to him or saw him, he said, I'm, I'm going to raffle this bike off to Forgotten Angels. And all of the proceeds are going to go to Forgotten Angels. And, I, you know, that just blew me away. Um, there's a lot of rifles out there and they kind of flood the market and people start to roll their eyes, but this thing is comp a completely different, um, you know, a, a different machine. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
he's going to raise a lot of money for a great cause and uh, it's, it's just mind-blowing and it's just as the days progress it's, the project's taking more traction and more traction and, and more people are finding out about it more people want to be a part of it um, you know we were really excited uh, we were talking about going to Born Free together and uh, showing the world this bike and the painting and um, unfortunately it, they pulled the show a few days ago but um, Chopper Fest will be the second week of December, which is very, you know, it's a David Mann type thing. And uh, uh, so our big plan is to go out there and recreate the original image. Um, the hot dog stand, the hot dog trailer is actually being refurbished as we speak. Um, so we got the bikes and we got the hot dog stand. And uh, we're going to go out there and mat meticulously duplicate that, that image. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to be able to see um, some of this in, in this issue of Born to Rest. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, great evening. Great, great job. Out. Great Have job, brother. Are you down with the nation? Tiny Trailer Nation, the biggest secret in travel and adventure. Take your motorcycle anywhere. Live in comfort on the spot. Say goodbye to hotel costs. Campers, toy haulers, theme trailers built for any budget. One bike or two includes electric, water hookups, microwave, refrigerator, sink, tie downs, and more. Your trailer or ours, new or used. Your dream is here at a working man's price. Tiny Trailer Nation, biker musician owned, a name you can trust. Is your business becoming invisible? Create a great advertising relationship today with Born to Ride. Call 888-795-5779.